altered item number 60-UE, the Victorian Mirror. This is one of the few items which is not being actively housed within the Panopticon. For reasons of current experimentation, the mirror is being held in a black rock lined corridor within the research sector, specifically an offset of the Synchronicity Lab. The research being performed here involves unseen forces that bind events together. Per a report written by the former Dr. Ash Jr., he claimed, quote, The world is unified in ways we do not yet understand, and sometimes we stumble across these invisible, unseen chords and wonder at the result. End quote. The reason that AI-60 is being held within this synchronicity lab is unknown. One could presume there is some sort of connection, but the details are a mystery. Is this itself synchronicity, or is it just coincidence? Are you listening, Ian? I guess. Agent Watts forwarded me your last report out of concern for your recent decline. What about it? Well, I'll let you speak for yourself. I'm starting to see the patterns here. Not just with this item, but why I'm even looking at it in the first place. When this file showed up as the next on my desk, I thought it was some kind of joke. Like, the universe is talking to me through my work. It's probably just a coincidence, right? No need to presume I'm losing it. No need to be evasive. Have you seen where we work? If you went to a civilian doctor with this, you would be diagnosed on the spot. But we know better here. You're not just placating me, are you? You think it's possible? Of course it's possible. We just survived an incident with an extra-dimensional resonance. It's all possible. What we need to figure out is whether something really is speaking to you or not. Both are possible. You need a little self-reflection to figure out which is which. Do you know the difference between coincidence and synchronicity? A little. Uh, what's the point, though? Well, synchronicity has an underlying meaning behind these experiences, while a coincidence is purely random chance. No meaning behind it. The research you have been doing as a part of your duties has recently began to echo your emotional state. This is an objective fact. However, whether this fact is meaningful or not, whether the meaning you are perceiving is warranted or not, it is possible that stress is getting to you and you need to be relieved of duty. But there is a possibility you're simply reacting to something real. So I ask you again, is it synchronicity or is it just coincidence? But that's not relevant to this report. While reviewing the containment report, I noted that the acquisition date was on July 15th of 2005. However, in the supplement, it is stated the altered item came onto the Bureau's radar in 2006. This occurred because of a series of disappearances in a redacted town in Illinois. Seems like a typo in the official record. The investigation into these disappearances led to the discovery of AI-60 within a local library. It was quickly contained, but the missing residents were never recovered. This may be inadvertently due to the Bureau's actions. You see, the altered item of this mirror involves the creation of a paranatural space, a mirror dimension, so to speak. This reality does not go on forever. It only exists based upon the radius surrounding the mirror itself. The exact distance is known to the Bureau, but is redacted in this report. Supposition. The missing townspeople likely vanished into the mirror dimension while it was hung up in the library. No timeline was given on when the altered item was put up at this location. It is unlikely to have been in such a place for long, otherwise the string of missing person reports would have been going on for far longer than reported. Since the mirror itself is the gateway to this reality and can only reflect a certain area, what happens when the mirror is moved when someone is inside? Are they lost in that other universe with no way of knowing where the mirror is, a thousand miles away with no hope of finding it? Or is it that once the mirror moves too far away, the reflected reality in that library simply ceases to exist, taking along with it any souls that are unlucky enough to be lost in that void? Research Proposal Testing of this scenario should never be performed on living beings. 
However, placing a recording device within the mirror dimension, then moving the altered item would allow this device to experience what it would be like. After returning the mirror to its original location and retrieving the recording logs, we would have answers for these questions. If the device is no longer present, it tells us something else. Another interesting detail of this reality is that some items are not reflected in it. Items on one side of the mirror may be missing on the other. No reason is given for this, and no correlation has been deduced. After further inquiry, the Bureau was able to uncover supplemental material that tracked the Victorian mirror back to at least 1914. It was in the possession of a family who recently moved to Illinois. While no details of the events were ever uncovered, we do know a young woman from this family was institutionalized roughly a year later. According to the Bureau, the reason for her admittance was emotional instability. According to the doctor who admitted her, quote, We certify that the case of Mrs. has shown her to be a lunatic under the reasons of hysteria, bad company, and imaginary female trouble. Her fixation with the family looking glass is noteworthy, though not an uncommon matter when considering the female disposition. Mrs. Carver is a fit subject for the lunatic asylum and will remain in its confines until her affliction has passed. End quote. The name of the doctor has been redacted. Interjection. It is not uncommon in this time period for common behavioral disturbances to be considered a mental health issue and to have the subject placed in a psych ward. While there is no confirmation of the exact lunatic asylum Mrs. Carver was placed in, there are some famous ones in Illinois such as the Dunning Lunatic Asylum or the Northern Illinois Hospital and Asylum for the Insane, now known as Elgin Mental Health Hospital. In the former, it is known that roughly 38,000 bodies are buried beneath the ground where Dunning once stood. Most of the patients were admitted for reasons of being a vagrant, poor, or being afflicted with tuberculosis. Some hospitals at that time had rumors of human experimentation being performed. Speaking for the case of Mrs. Carver, the psychological malady of hysteria was a very broad term. It is hard to know specifically what behavior she exhibited to be considered hysterical. Today the word describes a person who is frenzied, frantic, or out of control. I believe this best describes her behavior if she had an encounter with the mere dimension. However, at the time when she lived, hysteria included symptoms such as shortness of breath, fainting, anxiety, insomnia, agitation, sexual forwardness, irritability, or something as simple as nervousness. Really anything could be attributed to this and be grounds to declare one a lunatic worthy of being hospitalized. The word itself, lunatic, means moonsick because it was believed that these bursts of insanity would come with the full moon, then diminish after. <laughs> Seems false understanding of things is not new. Victims back then, just like we have now. <laughs> that being said, the evidence suggests that Mrs. Carver's experience with AI-60 was the trigger for her momentary hysteria not the imaginary troubles that the doctor who admitted her believed it to be. This doctor had no clue what she may have experienced and treated her as he would any other patient that came into his office, not bothering to look deeper. Of course, if he even remotely believed Mrs. Carver came into contact with another dimension formed by a family looking glass, he would have admitted himself to the loony bin next. Based upon our understanding of AI-60, we can surmise a reason for Mrs. Carver's period of hysteria. She isn't the first to have this reaction. An agent was interviewed after leaving the mirror and displayed symptoms that would otherwise be considered hysterical. Debrief for Mirror Excursion 7C. Subject is Agent Hardy. Hardy spent approximately three hours in the mirror. It's the longest time on record. Can you describe your experience inside Agent Hardy? Agent Hardy is physically healthy. All tests have come back clean. Yet the speech issue has persisted for hours. Calm down, Agent. 
It could be psychosomatic, but the fact that this only occurred after returning from the mirror makes a paranatural explanation more likely. I recommend a battery of tests and a class orange quarantine. During the director's excursion into the altered item, the reflected variance of this interview was uncovered. What? I can't understand you. You need to listen. I saw something in there. There is something inside. You need to lock down the mirror. Why are you talking like that? What's wrong with you? All of you? There's something in that fucking mirror! If this agent had the misfortune of living a century ago and was treated by a civilian doctor, he would have been diagnosed on the spot and committed just like Mrs. Carver. This agent witnessed something alive inside of the mirror. It is not out of the question that Mrs. Carver witnessed this same entity as well, causing her to behave in the same hysterical manner as this man did. Her behavior misinterpreted by the doctors as something else. Luckily, the director's brief encounter with this dimension gave us some answers. Her reports confirm the existence of a paranatural entity known as Isej, a pale reflection of her that became hostile. It is suggested that this hostility was caused by the hiss affecting the mirror. If this is the case, then the mirror was not infected when this agent and Mrs. Carver was inside. How this entity would have behaved in these circumstances is unknown. Would it be able to communicate? Would it be a twisted reflection that shows something that is invisible on the surface? Could it be an opportunity for self-reflection? What would it be like to meet this reflection, to understand it? If I were to... <sighs> Fuck it. Now you got any new reports to take up to Watts? This is supposed to be his time. Matter, eh? No, not today. Um, I need more time to get the next one finished. I haven't even recorded it. Come back later, but can you put in a request to bring a map of the research sector for this next drop? No, you sure. What for? Oh, just, um, just for some extra research.